Hello everyone and welcome to Sweet Hand Cooking Caribbean with Serena. Hi Serena, how are you? Hi Larry, I'm fine. Good, good to see you. And this is Serena's second show and tonight we're going to have a blast. She'll be cooking something uh, Christmas oriented and it promises to be delicious and lovely like she is looking tonight. <laughs> I'm ready for the end of the world. You're ready for the end of the world. All right. Yeah. Well, before we get into the kitchen, let me introduce the rest of the folks. We have on my left, your right, we have S Cynthia Seymour. Hey, Cynthia. Hi. Hailing yes. all the way from Florida. Next to uh, Cynthia, we have George Cohen. Hey, Larry. Hey, George. How are you? George Good. is from um, sunny California. <laughs> Next to George, we have Julia Senesak. Hey, Jules. How are you? She's muted. She's muted. <laughs> All right, next to Jules, we have Hi. Linda D. Hey, Linda. Hello. How Hi. are you? Linda. Hi, thank you. Ready for the end of the world. Ready for the end of the world, <laughs> New York City. <laughs> that should be fun here, right? Yeah. <laughs> Next to, next to Linda, we have Marilyn Ritter, who's also in sunny California. Hey, Marilyn. Hi. Good. And the last gentleman here, Navid Lancaster. Ah. Hi, everybody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Navid is from Trinidad, and he's a local musician, singer, songwriter. Yeah. Um, he has a production company. He does jingles. The guy is awesome. And he was on the last show, but due to some technical difficulties, yeah. um, he's gracious, uh, gracing us again with his presence tonight. Welcome back, Naveed. Hi, we're everybody. Looking, <laughs> we are looking forward to hearing from you, sir. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. And, of course, lady of the hour, Serena Bland. Yeah. The Trini Gourmet herself. Yeah, Larry. Ready uh, to start? Yeah, ready. I see you have some glam there tonight, girl. Thank you. It's an honor of the last show of the year. <laughs> All right. Nice, nice. Looking good. So, okay, what we what are you cooking tonight? Tell us. Well, tonight I'm making three favorites. One is a butterfly roast chicken in my spicy molasses glaze. Um, the second one is Jamaican rice and peas, which is something I've grown up having every, well, almost every Sunday because my mom is Jamaican. So just like uh, Trinidadians have their macaroni pie and calories, yeah, I have yeah. roast chicken and rice and peas. So <laughs> slightly Lovely. different home, a bit of a blended home. Um, I'm making my coleslaw, which is mm. very healthy and very light, and I'll be talking more about that, the advantages mm. of that. Mm -hmm. And finally, sorrel, which to all Trinis and in many other Caribbean islands, is a must-have beverage this time of year. So I'll be talking a little bit more about that as well. Okay. Sounds, sounds fantastic. Sounds good. <laughs> sounds <laughs> good. To do it in, so let's see how we can do this. First thing let's... I'm going to do is I have my chicken here, and it's been patted dry as much as possible. And to butterfly it, I have to take out the backbone. So that's really simple. All you have to do is just take some scissors. These scissors are not working as well as they should be. There we go. Let's just use a little pressure. And you cut through through the ribs and you just free the back one. So you're just cutting straight up the chicken. Feel free to break anything that's in your way. And what this does is it allows the roast to cook in a very short time because the chicken is level and all the meat is basically the same thickness. So Fantastic. I'm just, yeah, so I'm just getting this bone out right now. Some people start from the neck end, some people start from the tail end. Doesn't really make a difference to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like tomato, tomato. Yeah, you say tomato, <laughs> I say tomato, yeah. And besides, dressing up to cook is fun. <laughs> if you can dress up to cook and you still look good at the end, then it shows it's not that hard to do, is it? <laughs> no, it's not, actually. You know, so here I have the chicken. The backbone has been removed. If you like to make stock, this is something good to set it aside for so that you use everything. I'm a big fan of using everything. So you turn over the chicken. You get the mm. legs laying flat, 
And then you want to press on the backbone, the breastbone, my bad, to break it. So that's what we've done there. It's very simple. It's very soft. And that allows it again to lay flat. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we have the wings are tucked. You do, you, you, do, you do anything yeah. with the wings? You, um, you clip the tips or anything? or you just? Uh, I don't because they are underneath here. Okay. And, well, you know, I have some Western, hard, hardened West Indians in my home and they don't like me to cut anything off. They off, like to yeah. They like the yeah, they exactly. Like <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what they're talking nesting. about. They're yeah. not able with that, you understand. So these little fatty pieces of skin here under the leg, I'm now going to make a little incision with. Let me use this little knife here I bought just for that purpose. And uh, that's I just have to make one quick announcement here, um, Serena. Uh, sorry to disturb you, but no apparently there are some problems with the event page. Oh. Um, yeah. Uh, folks, if you're looking, you, you're probably not seeing us right now, but if you are on the event page, um, please bear with us. Uh, apparently there's a little glitch with, uh, with Google, and oh, hopefully no. that, that will be sorted out shortly. Anyway, go ahead. Serena, sorry about that. Okay, well, what I basically did was I made a little incision in the fatty part of the um, skin. Mm -hmm. Nothing too big because I don't want it to rip through while it cooks, but just enough that I can push through the drumstick. And so okay. what that does is it allows the chicken, the legs, to cook flat. Because, you know, sometimes while the chicken is cooking, the legs go all akimbo. And it's not the most elegant presentation. True. So by pushing it into these little slits that I've made here at the base of the chicken, it's going to stay flat as it cooks, okay? Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to brush it with my molasses glaze. And that glaze is basically molasses, Dijon mustard, thyme, um, molasses again, <laughs> of course. <laughs> and so it's going to look very dark. Larry thought it was burnt when I sent him a picture of it. What? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. well, it, it, it did. It did to me. It did. It did. Well, well I understand. I understood. I understood. I, I am sure. I am sure it looked. It looked great. You yeah. know, with the with the with the wider wider shot out. But yes. no, being that being that it was a tighter, yeah, be, yeah, exactly, exactly. Context is everything. So this will get darker, but it's just the caramelization of the molasses. Because look how dark molasses is to begin yeah, with, you know. Yeah. Oh, but it looks but, it looks good though. It looks it looks the chicken and looks nice. And it's pepper sauce in this as well. I forgot to. to oh, you that. put um, pepper sauce. Look, and folks, if you're thinking pepper sauce, it's local pepper sauce, which is made with Scotch bonnet peppers. Yeah, we're not talking Tabasco here. Actual no. No, this is heat. This is heat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have my glaze here. And then the last thing is my garlic, which I probably should have done this beforehand. But you know what? I'm in a good mood. We're just going with the flow. Mm -hmm. So I have my whole garlic cloves, and I'm just going to shove this under the skin. And I just love doing this. I find it adds extra flavor, and it softens while it cooks. So don't think you're going to have these hard chunks of garlic, you know, in your mm -hmm. chicken when you're complete because it actually cooks down and it's very buttery, it's very soft and all it does is it flavors the chicken juices as the chicken is cooking so that gets distributed all throughout the chicken. Oh nice. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. So, you know, you just take little scissors, make a little uh -huh. incision, stuff it into the, the leg area because I just put four in the breast area but you want to be sure that everywhere gets some. Let me put a smaller one in here. I hope everybody out in event land gets to see us eventually. Well, I am working on that right now. No problem, Larry. Yeah. At least I'm giving them something to see when they do. Yeah. <laughs> if um if for some reason they, they can't view it while it's live, um they could always come back. And view it after the um the video is is been uploaded, but the it'll end be is nice. Near, Larry. Yeah, the end is near. The end oh. is near, <laughs> <laughs> and it's it started with the events. <laughs> I'm gonna be eating. I'm gonna be eating like a king and a queen while the end comes. So I'm good right now. Yeah. What are you having, Mom, for your last meal. supper, everyone? What is? Yeah. <laughs> I I am 
I am having um, crackers, cheese and crackers. <laughs> cheese and crackers for your last meal? Yeah. Oh, oh my God. Can't you be more oh, no, have a last meal now. Okay, uh, what is everybody else planning on their last meal? So I'm going to put this into a 400 degree oven. I have my pan, my roasting pan. It's already covered in foil and a silicone mat. I love silicone mats because they make cleanup and removal so simple. And it's going to go into this 400 degree oven, and it's going to go in there for 35 minutes. We're going to check in on it. But looks oh, that looks great. That looks really nice. Yeah. Great. All right. <laughs> and let me just wash my hands for a second. <laughs> yeah, because you were just uh, with, with poultry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Unfortunately, my sink is not right next to here, so I took that out. The no next thing is to start my rice and peas. And again, anybody who is comfortable with West Indian food, and especially Jamaican food, knows about rice and peas. You have rice and peas, Larry? Of course. I Actually, I had yeah. some, um, well, in, in Trinidad, we call it pelau. Well, no, 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 what, no. Jamaican rice and peas. The Jamaican rice, okay, the Jamaican rice and peas. Yeah, that's uh. nothing like pillow. Okay, all right. This so is, you uh, might be learning something here tonight. All right, I'm watching. <laughs> You're watching. Watch and learn. So what I have here is I have um, two cups of coconut, coconut milk. Coconut milk, right. One and a half cups of water. Mm. Is that fresh coconut milk? Coconut milk. Mm. Is that fresh, right from the coconut? Um, no, I actually bought this in a tin because I'm lazy and I'm preparing for the end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have time for yeah, that. The, the end of the world Me is coming too. quickly, so, so you, 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 yeah. don't have, you don't have time to, to, to crack a coconut and, and oh, grate it. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've done Better it take time to dress up. <laughs> oh, exactly. It's bad on long fingernails, too. <laughs> Uh, and so what I also have here is the um the spice mix that we're going to be using. So I have sive, I have salt, I have minced garlic, I have a lot of thyme because thyme is so important to the flavor of this. So that's going to go in here as well. Now I'm 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 surprised that you aren't using any um pimento. Um Jamaican yes, pimento. Jamaica no. Jamaican pimento. Jamaican pimento exactly. Well, we don't really use Jamaican, um, my, my mother, I'm making this my mother's way. So let me, okay. before I say this and some Jamaicans come down on me and say they don't want to pimento. <laughs> that happens sometimes. I'm making this my mother's way. She's never put pimento in this. My mother okay. puts pimento in a lot of things, but she does uh -huh. not put it in rice and peas. So I'm following her directive. I, and for and those of you who, who are wondering what pimentos are, they're like little berries. They yeah, look like dry little... Berries. Like, I actually have yeah. two bottles of them up there because... Uh, bring, bring, bring them down and, and, and show, yeah. show folks. Yeah. And they're very important to Jamaican cooking. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh, Larry. I, they're behind some bottles. Oh, okay, all right, all right, all right. I won't be able to get at them. Just okay, all right. Nice try, though. Yeah. I have to watch in my arms, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> So okay. here I have my Scotch bonnet, which is like to me the holy grail of... Oh yeah, so, so, so that close, so that up and close because a lot of people I cook with a lot of Scotch bonnets, and uh, folks have been wondering, well, what the heck that looks like? Yeah, that's a that's Got a, a good green. shot of that? Yeah, that's a nice shot, yeah. So that's going to go into here. Lovely. Ah. That's what I'm starting my mix-up. I'm going to bring this up to a boil, okay? I haven't put the rice yet. I'm not going to put the rice until this is boiling. So that's covered to start. And while that is coming up to a boil, we're going to put together our coleslaw. See, everything comes together. If you start things while another part of another recipe is in phase or in process, you don't have to take all day in the kitchen to make a full course meal. Correct. And I think Larry is going to be very interested in this coleslaw. So what I have here is the traditional coleslaw, um, shredded carrots, shredded cabbage, raisins, um, some grated onion. But guess what I also put, Larry? I do some sorrel. Oh, you know, th this is interesting because... Um, That's you're a new one. Yeah, you, you, you're a 
the second person I saw use sorrel in um in in Cole's Law. Right. Yeah, that is that is interesting. Yeah. Good. Yeah, right. Interesting. It is it's not Navid Navid um I, I don't know how I, ne I never I never seen that before. So that's yeah, that's a twist. Yeah. That's a twist. See? Yeah. And 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 for folks, sorrel is um a, a flower actually. And so Serena will be touching on that when she Yeah, I'll be talking about that. I don't want to have some right. have some demos, have some examples that I brought mm -hmm. with me. So. Is it sheep sorrel or just regular sorrel? This You'll is, see later. Yeah, this is sorrel from a from a tree. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's a flower. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So it's so, it's a raw it's a raw flower in this coastal. That is that is brilliant, Serena. That is nice. Thank you. It has a very when it's um in its raw state, it's very tangy. And it's very crisp, it's very tart, and so it brings a kind of a cranberry-like attribute to the coleslaw. And I use cranberries in salads, so why not use sorrel? And it's very nutritious. And actually, Giselle, who's supposed to be on the hangout today and is stuck in traffic, she's the one who taught me about eating raw sorrel petals with salt in high school. And it's addictive, I've got to tell you. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the dressing. I have a little mm -hmm. more coleslaw here than the recipe that's on the page. So that's why I'm going to put a little more dressing than is in the recipe. And what I use is I use equal parts of first vinegar, my trusty white balsamic vinegar that I am in love with right now. <laughs> Larry knows all about the, my love for this vinegar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very fruity and um, very light. So that's what I like about it. It's not as tart as um, just plain white wine vinegar. Because it has some of that mellowness of balsamic as well. Some of that sweetness of, of balsamic. So that's really nice. So, got that vinegar in there. This is how I normally dress salads. I don't usually combine everything because, um, I don't know, I like to get little bits mm -hmm. of different flavor balances with each mm -hmm. bite. And this is how I find I get it. Okay, I have some good news here. The event just um, loaded and and the video is up. So, folks, if you're watching out there, sorry for for that, but it was out of our control. So it's 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 up and running now. Great. Mm -hmm. Um, I just put in a pot spoon <laughs> mm -hmm. of agave. That's another thing that I love um, a lot and I use a lot of. Um, it's very similar to sugar and honey, but it comes from the agave cactus. And it's very popular in um, vegan cooking because it has the characteristics of honey without having to come from an animal source. And it's lower in glycemic index than sugar and honey. So I enjoy using agave. And it's pretty easy to find in Trinidad now. It used to be something you had to find. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 is, it is pretty easy to find now. So, right. Serena, 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 can you just show me that, that again? Because you know I'm a, a vegetarian. I would like to get that. Yes. Turn. Are you all growing it now in Trinidad? No, it's no. just being imported. But it's from, being from Mexico. A lot. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and, the last um, thing, and Central America. Yeah. And the last thing I'm putting in is a pot spoon of flaxseed oil. And I'm doing this in oh, lieu yes. of the normal olive oil. Um, yeah. I love flaxseed oil. And I'm sure Linda D would know all about its health benefits. Oh, yeah. Um, it's, it's very good for you. It's very good for you. It's very good for um, cholesterol and hypertension, um, hormonal imbalances, bal helping to balance with that, Crohn's and colitis. It helps the digestive system. It's very rich in omega 3s and 6s and 9s. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And what I like about it is it has a very distinctive nutty flavor. It's a very strong nutty flavor. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, it adds an extra flavor component to the salad as mm. well. Absolutely. Yeah, I put it, it up in my salad dressing. Exactly. Fla flaxseed oil. You know, the funny thing is my granny used to use a lot of flaxseed oil. Okay. And, and I have kind of strayed away from that. Wow. Um, is it the I same don't know. granny that made the cactus shampoo? Yep, yep. The same granny that made the cactus shampoo. Granny knew what she was doing, eh? Yep, yep. And she, she, she lived to be 93, so. Exactly. Maybe it was because of that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that looks so that good, good, Serena. Fun. That looks good. That looks nice. Mm, that oh, looks it's nice. very light. It's, yeah. Of course, it's very fresh. 
And Larry knows that I like raw eating and I like raw mm -hmm. food. And one of the reasons I do that, I'm not completely raw, obviously, but um, raw enzymes, the, the enzymes, the live enzymes that are in raw food help with mm -hmm. digestion. And especially with meat, you know, sometimes you get that heavy feeling after mm -hmm. eating meat. Um, raw vegetables and raw salads eaten in conjunction with meat help that. They help to boost the, the digestive process and help the meat to break down. Because yeah. we on our own have trouble breaking down meat. Um, all the people who think that you're born a carnivore, we actually don't have the enzymes to produce sure. the enzymes that actual carnivores do. Um, so um, I think it's very interesting because in other cultures like say Korea and in Europe, they eat sauerkraut and kimchi. Mm -hmm. And that is fermented vegetables, which have even more enzymes. So you see, it's like mm -hmm. the, the old wisdom, knowing what yeah. the stomach needed. And so I try to bring that to my table, especially when I'm eating meat. So that's my well, raw food. Yeah, slot. yeah, yeah, you're right because the the enzymes are alive in in raw food, and as you cook it, the mm -hmm. enzymes die, and it and it with the enzymes dying, digestion is a problem. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. That looks exquisite. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> so, we're almost ready to hear Naveed's mm -hmm. first song, but as you can see, my... Yeah, let's see how it's... Oh, wow. Yeah. That's smoking. That is smoking. Yeah. I'm ready to <laughs> two cups of rice, white rice. Mm -hmm. is, it, uh, is it pop, is pop oil rice or just regular... Um, White, I white think rice. It's right, white oh. rice, you know, but okay. Yeah. Now, just just want to you know for okay, folks well, who you know no for folks who are looking there you know, they might they might think it might be you know jasmine or, or no it's or just right, plain just white regular rice. plain rice song. Lovely. Hey, hey, what, hey what, David. What, tell us about the song. Um. Yeah. The, the name of the song is called Letter to England. It sounds kind of archaic because I know people don't send letters much anymore. It's more email, but. Uh, when I wrote it, that's the time, that was the big thing, I guess, you know, before email kick in. So, uh, let me put this into studio. Yeah, just studio mode. And if, when um, Naveed goes on studio, folks, we'll have to mute our mics, with the exception of Serena, of course. I'll mute as well, don't worry. Mm. Okay. All right, so everybody's hearing me? Yep. Yes. Okay, everybody's hearing me now, right? Should sound a little different mm -hmm. now. Nice. <clears throat> so, here's the song, it's called. Um, letter to England. I see your plane taking off from the runway. I wave my hand as your flight speeds on by. In the darkness, airborne planes going eastward I see its lights twinkle out in the sky And I'm writing this letter to England I hope you write back soon It's been five weeks since that plane took you It took my dreams too Do you want me to be sad for you at all? Don't be afraid, I tell myself and I start laughing Yes, I'm afraid, your life and my dreams will take the fall And now my letter will tell you clearly That which my dreams hide Time will tell if you would make it I swallow my pride
What is love if it's wasted on the things you don't care about? Your life took a turn for the better. Love is something I can't do without. Yeah, yeah. And I know you had to leave And I didn't stop you Now I walk along these streets Thinking about you Well done, well done. Thank you so much. So, Serena, I saw yes. you uh, while Naveed was playing there, you put something into that pot. Yes, I, I, have, I have to bring you up to speed while Naveed uh -huh. was playing. Uh -huh. I glazed the chicken again. Yeah, I, 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 I saw that. I saw when you opened the, um, the oven. Mm -hmm. Yes, and what I just did was I added the red beans, the red kidney beans to my rice. Ah. And okay. usually that's put in during the boiling stage, mm -hmm. but that's when you're dealing with dried beans. Right. And okay. as Marilyn and George know from a previous show of mine, I like to cook my beans in advance and freeze them and have mm -hmm. them ready at the go. So these mm -hmm. beans were already taken out of the freezer. They were already defrosted. I don't want them to overcook, so I didn't put them in during the boiling stage to fall apart. So I just mm -hmm. put them in now that the heat has been reduced to medium. Um, so so Cynthia said that's an excellent idea. Thank you, Cynthia. Yeah. And and uh, uh, that could apply for all beans, right? Yes, all mm -hmm. beans. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nice. So and that speeds the the putting together of, as well because you cut out that step by doing the beans in bulk sometime in the past. Okay. okay. So while that's going, I'm going to put together my sorrel. Oh yeah, the the, the sorrel. Yeah, let's 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 Are let's look here? at the, yeah, look at the flowers, right? Right, matches my nails. <laughs> <laughs> and these are the soil flowers that our drink is made from. And it's also known as the Roselle flower. And it's from the hibiscus family. Mm -hmm. And it has a lot of health properties. It's very high in antioxidants. It's very high in vitamin C. Some of that is lost when we boil it out and add six mm. pounds of sugar, which is why yeah. it's also good to incorporate it in its raw form, which can be done with, in salad. That, that, that you that you did in the in the slow. That is that exactly. is brilliant. I have Thank to do. You. I have to do that. Yes. I will do that. I will do that. No, me and, too. Um, I promised him that I was giving him a shout out. So if Chef mm. the DC is watching this, this mm. is your shout out, and he runs the West African influenced community cuisine community on Google Plus. And when I posted Sorrel, um, it got this big dialogue mm -hmm. going, which is one of the great things about Google Plus communities. Mm -hmm. And he told us about how Sorrel is used in Africa. And I, I, I saw I saw that. I, that was so a very I interesting um, thread. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I thought it was good to share with everybody. So if you're on yeah. the events, check and see where that post, because mm -hmm. it's it's almost it's the national drink of Senegal, believe it or mm -hmm. not. It's used throughout the Sudan. It's used in other African countries. And... Now, and it's used in the mm. Caribbean, but we don't really use it as much for medicinal purposes. So it's very interesting to see how it's used in mm. different ways in different countries. Okay. So, Rina, yes. can I ask, is that the flower or is that the fruit? No, it's a flower. It's, flower. it's a flower. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's uh -huh. the flower. Mm -hmm. okay. um, it doesn't really have a fruit. Um, <laughs> we just use the petals. Yeah. Some cases use the leaves, but um, we primarily use it at the petals at this time of year because it's red. It's very celebratory and festive you know, yeah. season. Uh, okay. I thought it had a little berry inside, but maybe it was... That's the seed. 
That's, that's the, the seed. seed. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know what that is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you, you, yeah. We we discard it, but I'm sure some of the cultures would use that seed, though. On on this, uh, Serena. Yeah. Do, do you know yeah, anything exactly. about that? Yeah. So to make the drink, I mm -hmm. picked a whole lot of soil. <laughs> you can see that oh, on the nice, page. That is serious. <laughs> wow. Serious amounts of soil. Um, yeah. boiled it for half an hour. Let it boil it with cloves. Let it steep mm -hmm. overnight. And then I add my secret blend of spices. Um, but you know, orange peel um, would be part of that. A little bitters, a little um. Mm. Larry likes cinnamon. I don't cinnamon. put cinnamon, but yeah. I like that idea. The cinnamon. Yeah. Cinnamon. Um, I use it cloves nice again. Jamaican influence. Mm. The more cloves, the better. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you know what? Also works in that too. Bay leaf. Oh, that's a good one. Put, we have a put, bay leaf tree. Yeah, I'll put about put about ten leaves a bay leaf okay. in there. Yeah. Wow. Gives it a gives it a nice nice flavor. Yeah. We'll see. Mm -hmm. So once that's done, it's strained, and you can see I have that here, and it's a lovely dark red color. Beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. And I'm going to sweeten it now. Look at that sweeten it on here. Sweet hand, right? Yeah, sweet hand. Yeah, yeah, the sweet hand. The sweet hand going to sweeten it. <laughs> so I have my syrup, um, two cups of brown sugar, cooked with one cup of um, water. Let me get a fresh squeeze. And of course, um, folks can use agave with that, right? Also? They could use a no. carpet to sweeten it. Yeah. No, to, to sweeten it. To sweeten it. Yeah. But you know, I on a budget, so. <laughs> right, right. Of course, of course, because uh -huh. a coffee down here is, is expensive. It is. Since it's an imported product. Oh, this is good. Mm. So I'm just tasting as I go along because mm. I don't like when soil just tastes of sugar. The again because it's silly. Yeah. Think of it as cranberry juice. That tartness is really nice, and so yeah. um, we want that balance of tart and sweet. I don't like when the brown sugar becomes overpowering. I agree. We're getting and, there. And also the um, for those pirates at heart, you could put a little rum in there. Hey, that's coming, Larry. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, all right. Okay, good. All right. I, I spoil that. I spoil that. Sorry, sorry. sorry. All right. <laughs> See, that's why I taste it because. I would have put yeah. this, it would be too much. Mm. We're ready now. That's good. So taste, taste as you go along. Just because the recipe says two cups of sugar, don't feel that you have to just put the two cups of sugar. Um, taste, moderation. How are my pirates doing? <laughs> pirates are, ah, there we go, yeah. there we go. Right? All right. Okay, so I've got my black label. Julia. Finish <laughs> this off. It's a dark rum. Always use dark rum with soil. White rum is too harsh, I find. You really want your soil to be smooth and warm and relaxing. No, that's a pirate's that's... measure of rum in there. <laughs> <laughs> Ahoy! I can all the way up to the top, but you know, not everybody I have with me is a imbiber, so to speak. Yeah. That looks very relaxing. It's so relaxing, George. So, Serena, is that the non-imbibers amount of rum there that you put in? Yes, yes. This was this this was good. Just take the edge off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like how she yeah. says that. Just okay. take the edge off. <laughs> yeah, this is to take your edge take off. Take the edge off a little bit. Ooh, like, you, have any, you have any taste testers over there? I do. Jason, you want to come and try this all? Yeah, yeah, let Jason come. I haven't seen Jason in a while. Yeah, let him come and... <laughs> Jason, <laughs> the man. The <laughs> okay, Jason, how you doing? <laughs> Your honest opinion. All right, good. <laughs> Not a few words. <laughs> With many expressions. Yes. <laughs> Mm. It's good. It takes All the right. edging. Good, good. <laughs> so now the holes have appeared in my rice. Okay. That's when you know it's time to take it all the way down. I put it on warm at this point and cover it. Okay. Um, do, do you mix it up at this point too? Can you? I do it afterwards. Okay, okay. Right, yeah, I normally that... leave it at this point, cover mm. it, and then after the last next 20 minutes, then I'll fluff it. Okay. Because um, folks don't stir because you know, people like to stir stuff, you know. Yeah, no, so, well, I was always taught to just mm -hmm. let the holes appear, mm -hmm. take down the heat and cover it, and that is the same process. And it makes sense, it makes sense. Yeah. Yes. 
-hmm. you know, only to fluff it at the end. At the end, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think maybe because in some ways that releases some of the um the steam. If I was mm -hmm. to stir it at this point, steam would escape, and that's yeah, and that would slow, slow down the cooking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So let's see how we're doing here. Any questions? Anybody on the event stream? Any questions in the hangout? Uh, let me go to the event stream. Uh, yeah, yeah. Jo George, can you go to the event stream, please? What about Gunga beans? Cynthia asks. Do I know Gunga beans? Do they have a different name here, Larry, or am I just drawing a blank? No, Gunga beans. Um, uh, Gunga that, beans are used in Jamaica. That's they're like the green chickpeas. Pigeon peas. Pigeon peas. Yeah. That's pigeon yeah. peas. Oh, yeah. yeah, you can use pigeon peas in this dish. Yeah, definitely. In fact, that's the other popular um, pea or bean that's used in this dish. Good call, Cynthia. <laughs> Good call. She knows her she yeah. knows her Jamaican cuisine. I cook down there. <laughs> I know. I know. I love it. Any any more questions from the peanut gallery? S Julia. Yes. No, I'm just fascinated. I'm liking the uh I'm liking uh the uh Anything with coconut milk is good for me. Mm -hmm. So uh, this rice and bean dish, I'm excited to see. I wouldn't have paired red beans with coconut milk, but mm. it sounds good. Yeah. It's very good. It is, it's like comfort food for me. Like, I don't yeah. even need the meat. If mom makes a, a pot of this, I just sit down and I just eat it uh -huh. by itself. Because the creaminess of the coconut milk with the yeah. creaminess of the beans, it's just like, ugh. Oh. Like comfort food. No, no. no when, when Serena had earlier asked me if I had um, Jamaican rice and peas, I akin that to the pilau, which right. is the rice and the pigeon peas. Right. That that, that we use here, um, and and I also put coconut milk in mine. So that's why I was kind of saying, well, yes, it's close. But what Serena has done there is is completely different. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that is so good. And it, it yeah, it, it looks like it will taste. I have to make real you good. a watch now, Larry. Larry has to be You you out. have been promising me every in. everything that you have posted yes. and 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 prepared on the I'm show. I'm showing up at your door, you know. Well, hey, we only a mile away, you know, <laughs> a mile apart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, are you ready for your next song? Yep. Ending. Close. Blending. <laughs> Sorry. Um. Actually, the the kind of. I mean, the the story is just the band. The band I, I was with at the time, Broken Mirrors. We played for about twelve years, and this is one of the songs that 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 uh we used to play. So this is a song that I wrote, basically about um things you don't need, uh, but you hear it in, in in the lyrics. So let me put this back on the studio, and the folks can mute their mics. Please. All right, so this is a, a the song is called Blending.
don't need different causes No time for indignation We don't want no old world order We know that's going to fall We're not going to take scary dogma That's religious pollution All we want is the great peace message God's gift for us all That day will come, one day we'll see When mankind will one day be free Everybody's blending into one And when that day our souls will fly Up into that clear blue sky Beholding the power of the sun Everybody's blending into one And when that day our souls will fly Up into that clear blue sky Beholding the power of the sun Nice, nice, nice. Nice election. Okay, Serena, where are we? <laughs> <laughs> well, the chicken is going to be done in just a few seconds. All right. So we can just chat a little until then. No problem. <laughs> I don't want to take it out too soon, of course, because nobody wants undercooked chicken. No, 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 no. We, wow. we, we don't want no... <laughs> Pink, pink is pink is not in <laughs> when it comes to chicken. <laughs> oh, my wife is that surround drink. I wish I could pass this to everybody. It's I know. It's lovely. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. And, 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 and instead of us talking, we should be drinking some syrup. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> well, that looks that looks great. That looks great. Thank um, you. Any any questions from the uh, Peanut Gallery, George? Anyone out on the uh, event stream has any questions that it might be? I I have really haven't seen any questions out there. I okay. I do. I have a question, Serena. So where did you get the sorrel? Did you grow it in your yard? You bought it at the market? That's a great question. I got it at the supermarket. They sell it in these nice big bags. Oh. Um, normally at this time of year, you'll see people selling it out of trucks. <laughs> wow. Just kind of high on the side of the highways and the roads, and you can just buy. Of course, it's cheaper there, but I'm lazy, so I just bought it at the supermarket, and of course, on, on at the markets as well. So it just proliferates this time of year. Yes, yeah, sorrel so is real cheap this time, and um... and so what does a bag of it cost you? <laughs> That's my chicken. <laughs> That's now. your timer. <laughs> That's the, <laughs> your chicken yeah. timer. Um, a. a Bag of uh, how many pounds did you buy, Serena? Oh, um, I bought about a two-pound bag. Uh -huh. A two-pound bag. Two, two pound bags. And I just got another two-pound bag. So, <laughs> so a, a two-pound bag at the supermarket costs how much in in terms of US? I'm bad with numbers. All right. Um, uh, I know on the on the street on the sidewalk, like the she said, price. the street <laughs> price uh, for for two pounds, it's usually about uh, twenty TT. Mm -hmm. Which is about three dollars and something cents U.S. So it's grown all over the place in Trinidad. Is that the deal? And and does it bloom at this time of year or continuously? It blooms at this time of the year. Okay. That's part of why it's associated with Christmas as well. Right. They call the exactly. Yes. Christmas, so it's yes. like ooh, Christmas. Yeah. You this know? this time of year, the poinsettias, like Serena said, um, blooms, uh, flowers. Sorry, and uh, the sorrel tree. Flowers at this this time. Oh, that looks great. Is ready. Mm-hmm. Tell me how this looks. Oh, that looks good. Ah, wow. Oh, yeah. yeah, the the molasses has oh, yeah. definitely given that a nice color. And as you can see, the juices are all around it, so I mean right. it's really clear. And mm -hmm. I'm just gonna cover it for another ten minutes. 
that's something that I actually learned from um, Dory Greenspan, one of Dory Greenspan's cookbooks about when you cook, it's a very much the French method, cooking the chicken at a high heat, shorter time, taking it out a little earlier than other recipes mm -hmm. would, and then tenting it. And that residual heat, it continues cooking on the inside and the bird stays moist. Moist, yeah. Yeah, yeah so you get that. The high heat gives you the crunchy skin and mm -hmm. then the tenting, the tenting of the chicken. We're, we're, we're finished cooking on the inside. The inside. And stay yeah. deliciously mm -hmm. moist. So thank you, Dory, if you ever see this. Love your work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's what's going on with my chicken right now. And I also have a meat thermometer because just in case some people, they don't always trust um, using their eye with meat mm -hmm. um, because, you know, undercooked meat, bad things can happen to you. <laughs> oh, talk about it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So I have my trusty meat thermometer here. And with roast chicken, I like it to be at around 160. Um, some places will tell you 170. That's a little too high. That's going beyond the safe zone in my book. At, 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 one, at 170, that meat turns very dry and stringy mm -hmm. exactly yeah. 160 yeah. is fine 160 is, 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 is perfect thank yeah. you and if you see the 160 and you tent it it's probably mm -hmm. going to increase to 165 at some point before it starts to cool down so yes you're going to be safe when you yeah. take it out of the oven if you see that 160 of course you also want to see the juices are running clear and mm -hmm. if you wiggle the leg there's no resistance those are mm -hmm. all little signs that your chicken is ready yeah. Yeah. and good to go hey, yeah. what do you do with the leg Serena could you tell me that again you just wiggle it. You just take it and you just give it a little wiggle. You know? And if it's like jiggling around and it's all good. <laughs> Teasing you. Yeah. You're jiggling the leg. Yeah, jiggle the leg. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm with you on the chicken on the chicken temp and even on pork temp. If the juice is clear, I'm done cooking the meat. I don't want it mm. to get any more done because at hundred and eighty, you know, which is what pork is often okay. Uh, mm. supposed to be brought in at it's dry by then so you know yeah. I like to I'm I'm with you as long as the juice is clear I think it's good yeah exactly yeah. I'm 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 on that same vein too yeah. I'm testing my rice now let's see mm. oh yeah mm. it's ready to fluff good. okay and it tastes so good and you can't taste it right now and I wish you could mm. and of course every West Indian knows but I have to tell for the benefit of the, the external crowd <laughs> the visiting mm -hmm. crowd. Mm -hmm. Be very careful when you stir this that you don't bust the pepper. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good, good point. Yeah. To burst yeah. Bad, yes. Pepper. Bad things can happen. Yeah. <laughs> bad things can happen to you. Yeah. No. No good will come of that. <laughs> no good will come of that. The pepper has surrendered its heat. It has surrendered its flavor, so we can bid it adieu. <laughs> ah. Uh. So it yes. isn't going to be really super hot. No, it's just there for flavor. Oh, flavor, and just a little heat. Little, little, little heat, yeah, little heat. You're just okay. gonna, it's just gonna give it a nice little heat while it goes down. Oh, this rice looks really fluffy. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, I was going to bring it a little closer. Really good. Mm. So it's nice. been fluffed. It it smells of coconut milk here, like. Oh, I'm sure. Mm. Mm. Julia, yeah. it smells just like cream of coconut right now. Mm -hmm. It's so fragrant with the thyme as well that was added. And I can't wait to serve this. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that's going to be great. And, and folks, if you want to add a little color to that, you could always put a little um, turmeric in, in, in the coconut milk and it will turn it a nice yellow. Sorry, before I get cuffed down by a bunch of Jamaicans. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't that, really like to see yellow in everything. I know, I know. I it's, have, it's to, the, I have to stand up for my mom and, and her zone right now. It's, it's the, Serena, <laughs> yeah, I, apo I apologize. So <laughs> it's the it's the Indian in me that's coming I out. <laughs> it's like I'm a little pale. It's a little, little something yellow. Yeah. <laughs> I have to stand up for the purity of the dish here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they'll come to me. So that is almost. It. I'm almost ready to plate, so you want me to do that? Yeah, sure. Yeah. sure. Yeah. Okay, great. Mm, so let's get that. that plate. You can pass the coaster. And wh while you're plating, you could pour another um, glass of salt. Another round? <laughs> yeah, another round. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so. And you see it came together. 
all in time. I mean, that's pretty ridiculous, I think. Mm -hmm. That's great. <laughs> and, and yeah, folks, you could do all this within an hour. Yeah. I mean, of course, you have to prep yeah. beforehand, but it's really not yeah. that bad. The actual coming to get, you know, and because of the nature of the recipe, you can even prep some parts the day before, the night before. Mm -hmm without any problems. So it's very leisurely. It can come together very leisurely because look how this came together. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm dressed up. My hair yeah. is good. <laughs> you're you're, you're <laughs> glamming. You're glamming. I'm doing my thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let me cut a little wing here. There's my scissors. And I wash the scissors because, again, we don't want to mix raw chicken and cooked chicken. So this scissors was washed during one of Nabeed's songs, because I know somebody will watch this and be like, oh my god, that scissors was tainted. Mm -hmm. No, it's not tainted. So, I'm just going to cut here. And if you could take some nice photos after. I will, definitely. Yeah. Hmm. I'm having trouble getting that joint right now. But don't worry, it's coming. I probably should have just used a knife. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry. Trouble with it's the joint. It's a little more dull than I would have. <laughs> there we go. All right. Yeah. It looked sharp, but it lied. <laughs> and, and of course, you have a nice little gravy there, so you could drizzle that over the... Um... Of course. I'm going to be putting yeah. this in a little bowl. Yeah. Know, of course. So I have my yeah. drippings. Yeah. See here. Okay. Voila. <laughs> that looks good there. Yeah. That looks good. That looks nice. That looks Thank nice. You, yes. I'm going to turn it over where you get more glaze, but mm. my chicken got a little zog up there, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Trinidadian thing there. Zog yes. Up. Uh, yeah. Trinidad yeah, too. Mashed up, you know. Mm -hmm. But, um. Are you making me hungry again? <laughs> Thank you. Mm. So Let's get one. That looks good. Yeah. What about that glass of sorrel in hand, too? <laughs> <laughs> get, a pick of, get, a, get a shot. <laughs> yeah. Nice. 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 Okay. So, Serena, well done. Thank you. Well done. Well done. And you want to tell us about your next show, when um, when mm -hmm. that's coming up? Well, my next show is January 10th, and um, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm supposed to have um, beauty blogger Afro Bella, so I want to. I know a lot of people out there love her. I love her, and um, we're going to be collaborating because she is Trinidadian, and uh, we're going to be making a classic Trinidadian dish. I'm not going to say what it is. I want to keep a little surprise, but we're going to be cooking that together um, live. January so, so you, you'll have a cook-along then? We're going to have a cook-along, yes. It's going to be my first cook-along. That's right. usually going to be the first Tuesday of every, um, the first Thursday of every mm -hmm. month. Um, but, yeah. you know, we'll see how that schedule goes. But it's, And mm -hmm. I'm hoping to have another awesome live musical guest. And I'll announce that a little bit later on G+. Plus. So okay. January 10th, same time, yeah. same day. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. And folks, uh, you could watch everything on um, stream on Hangout Networks while the thing is live, as well as on the event page. And I just want to give you guys a little reminder, tomorrow is the Pirates Pub, which will also be on uh, part of Hangout Networks. And we have a special show for you guys tomorrow. So, um, Serena, thank you very much. I would like to thank everyone in the... Peanut Gallery, Cynthia, George, Linda, Julia, Marilyn, and of course, Navid for your wonderful Rock performance. Up. Thank and you, sir. Thank you. Good. <laughs> added, added a nice touch. So, with that said, I know you have guests and they're ready to eat. Yes, silence. So I'm hoping <laughs> so with that, Serena, we bid you good night and bid everyone out there good night. So you want to take us out, Serena? Take us out, how? I find Naveed should take us out. He should play us out. Yeah, okay. Wow. Naveed. <laughs> <laughs>
Do I need to go back into the studio? No, no, no just, no, just, just, just play, just play, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. While, while I'm drinking my sorrow. <laughs> Along and you welcome you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.